Good morning, everyone. Wow, that worked. <laughs> Surprised. I mean, it's quite early. Uh, lucky it worked. My name is Jay. I'm based out of Berlin, Germany. And on my day job, I work on a design tool, which is Adobe XD. In my free time, I am helping to run a non-for-profit, which is the Berlin chapter of the Interaction Design Association. And that is where we are fostering knowledge exchange across a community of experts and novices. And we recently celebrated our 10th anniversary, hence the cake. In 2018, I had the privilege to co-found IXDA's World Interaction Design Day. And last year's IXDD saw more than 90 events in 37 countries around the globe, all on the topic of diversity and inclusion in design. And this year's IXDD is taking place on September 24, on the topic of trust and responsibility. And I'd love to see you joining us or even hosting an event for World Interaction Design Day on your own. I want to open my talk today with an imaginary dystopian future scenario. But I was struggling to find a good visual for that. So please, use your imagination. Close your eyes, if you like. In my scenario, everything went wrong. Imagine we, as designers, went on exactly how we operate today, applying our models, living through disruption, incentivized to focus on growth, and putting the product on the table of the business totally focused on designing and optimizing that one pixel that might make the world a better place. Imagine we now live in this dehumanized, brave new world that has seen a cataclysmic decline in society, ran by tyrannical governments that are being controlled by a few remaining corporations. There is no want of any kind, only unabashed consumption and hedonism. We have replaced ourselves with technology, and technology is ruling us from above. What an uncomfortable scenario, right? Wouldn't it be desirable not to let that happen? So let's walk back in time from this gruesome scenario and focus on the present. But let's stop for two minutes at a point in time probably not too far out from today. Watch this. Who is it, Han? It's Lizzie. Meet the new member of the family. No way. You got to... Did you get a Lizzie? Whoa, it's powered by artificial intelligence. It's a self-aware personal assistant. It gets smarter the more we use it. We'll stop reading about it and turn it on, Dad. What's she doing? I'm syncing with every device in proximity. Hi, I'm Lizzie. How may I assist you today? Lizzie, that's such a pretty name. You're pretty too, Allison. <gasps> she knows my name already. That's so cool. Yo, Lizzie, how tall is the Empire State Building? The Empire State Building is approximately 2,908 Lizzies stacked on top of each other. Yo, Lizzie, play my favorite song. Where you go? I love big data. Big data loves you too, Brandon. <laughs> Yo, Lizzie, what's on our calendar this week? Brandon, you have basketball after school tomorrow at 4 p.m. Allison, you have track. Jerry and Mary, you have dinner with your neighbors on Friday at 7 p.m. No, 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 we can't do Friday. No, that's the night that we... Okay, I've gone ahead and rescheduled dinner with your neighbors for the following Friday. Great. No, that's a good thing. I said great. Are we sure we want this in our life? Introducing Big Data. 
3.0. Awesome use of voice technology, isn't it? Especially that calendaring example resonates with me. Think about how many steps it takes to reschedule that dinner with your neighbors today. You gotta open your calendar, reach out to the neighbors, doodle for a matching time, update the invite, send it out and await confirmation. A minimum of 15 steps, likely more, replaced by simple voice interaction. That's a great use case for voice. And it's the exact place where we can win, by saving the user time, by making day-to-day -day tasks more efficient, more streamlined, by truly improving the human condition. I love that. But this well-done short movie series is also telling another story. Look it up on Vimeo, it's called Big Data, Lizzie. And it tells the story of total integration, of emerging technology straight into our direct environment and everyday lives, based on technology that is available today. So, what could possibly go wrong? I want to take the chance and discuss a couple of points that I believe are valuable to explore further. I think if we are set out to make the world a better place through technology, it might be a good start to realize where we are coming from. And Margaret Gold Stewart, she's a VP of product design at Facebook, and she's previously been with YouTube and Google. She published this piece on Medium in the wake of the recent backlash at Facebook. And Max reminds us that as designers, we sit at the intersection of technology and the humanities. And then there is a matrix diagram in Max's article that can help us to realize our impact and correlate that to our responsibility. Realize our impact to humanity, our impact to society, our impact to the profession, to protect and to nurture the potential to do good with the great influence we exert. The impact to the business, to our own workplace, and how we impact our own future selves. And Max's diagram is representing a broader view of design's duties towards people and society. On the x-axis, you have what we built at an increasing scale and speed, from the pixel to the product to the whole ecosystem in which your product operates. And as you move from pixel to ecosystem, constraints interdependencies and complexities grow, and we are likely to face unanticipated consequences and various network effects. On the y-axis, same idea, but the scale is the audience you are designing for. Starting with one individual human and working your way up to all of society. And as that scale grows, the less we can assume whom we are designing for, their motivations, their culture, their needs, and their wants. As designers, we feel really comfortable in that bottom left quadrant. We feel that we understand and we are in control. It's where we can be human-centered, focusing on a particular audience of people that we are intentionally designing for, and a set of tasks that we understand is important to them. And you might have intuitively located yourself on that matrix, which is a good thing. We come back to that later. <laughs> 